One of my favorite things about the GoPro Hero 11 is the one button time lapse mode. Are the one button time lapse modes time lapses? There are some time lapse modes that we've seen in previous GoPros, but there are also several new ones that are unique to the Hero 11. And in fact, because I really like the 11 so much, I'm just going to film this whole video with the GoPro Hero 11, 5.3K 24 FPS. This is actually just the audio from that camera, which I think sounds very decent and usable, but since audio is half of video and because it's a little bit breezy and there's leaf blowers and stuff happening and dogs barking, I'm just gonna use the voice memo app on my phone to record the audio for this. So this is a pretty simple setup, just GoPro, voice memo app, and then we're good to go to GoPro. And before any more time elapses, let's talk about time lapses. Anytime we're talking about time lapses, what we're really talking about is taking a long period of time and condensing it into a shorter period of time. That's pretty much it. And here's an example of that with the regular time lapse mode showing the sun's path moving across the floor over several hours. And yes, watching the sun move across the laundry room floor is probably the most extreme use of an action camera pretty much ever. And I'm even using that same basic time-lapse mode right now with the Hero 10 so that I can get a time-lapse of this video about time-lapses. Now, several of these modes are unique to the GoPro Hero 11, but several of them like Time Warp, Time-lapse, and Night-lapse are available on the Hero 10 and even previous models too. But we're gonna cover everything that's available on the 11. For the most part, you just turn on the camera, press one or two buttons, hit record, and then you're ready to go and that's it. And when you're done, everything is finished. There's like very little post-processing to do. You can do this stuff on older GoPros. You can do it on traditional cameras, big cameras, but learning how to do it and setting it up and trial and error and experimenting can be kind of frustrating and can definitely turn some people away from even wanting to try. And keep in mind that for most of the time-lapse modes, the longer you can record, the better. The more footage you can get, the better. You can always fine tune things and adjust the timing of that specific clip later on, either in the GoPro Quick app or in whatever editing software you like to use. So you don't have to get it exactly frame perfect while you're recording. Just get the basic thing and then you can adjust it later on. So I'll be keeping I won't be beekeeping, but I'll be keeping things simple by using just the default presets and all of the modes throughout this video. Let's start first with the three modes that are new to the Hero 11, starting with one of my favorite, which is Star Trails. Basically, the way that you use this is you keep the camera in one spot. You don't want the camera to be moving, and then you just point it at the night sky and let it record. You do have the option to adjust how long you want the trails to be. You can do short trails, medium trails, or maximum length trails. I like the maximum length ones because, you know, if you're going to use this effect, why not use it to the max? In general, I've gotten pretty good results using 90 minute exposures, but if you do longer, it will just get better and your trails will get longer and longer too. Since time lapses do cover long periods of time, you could potentially risk running the battery out of your camera. So in order to avoid that, I've only done all of mine using the Enduro battery that comes with the 11, but you could also run it off of a USB like power bank or plug it into a wall outlet or something. And then you could have unlimited power. This is a fun effect too to play around with foreground objects. So you can just point the camera directly at the sky, but sometimes putting something like a tree or an object in front of the camera really gives it sort of an interesting it just sort of gives it an interesting composition. Very important though, the GoPro is very good at adjusting all the different lighting and all the different exposures. However, be sure that things are as dark as possible. In this example right here, it was pretty much pitch black out here. There were just like a really dim little landscape light on in this tree over there. But in the time lapse or the Star Trail time lapse, it looks like it's so bright because the long exposures and all that stuff makes you know, it really emphasizes any kind of light source. So the darker you can have your setting, the better. The next mode, which is really fun, it's something that I've been doing and playing around with on DSLRs for years and years now, is light painting just built in to the GoPro Hero 11. Just like with Star Trails, it's very important that you keep the camera steady for light painting, and then you just basically move a light source around. Anything that's moving at like a relatively quick speed won't be captured, but anything that's standing still will. So if you have an object and you move lights around it, you won't see the hand or the person moving the light, but you'll see the light itself, and then you'll see the results of the light on the object. The object that's not moving will stay there. Anything that's not moving super fast, so if you're moving your hands like pretty slowly around and you're not doing a very long light painting, you might get a little ghostly images of you or your arms or whatever moving lights around 
it can kind of look cool sometimes. You could use it to, I don't know, scare your friends or your kids. Scare your kids with the GoPro Hero 11. An important thing to remember, especially if you've done light painting before, is when you're using it on the GoPro, you don't need to stress out, which for someone like me who stresses out over everything is very, very nice. When you use a traditional camera to do light painting, you have to be really concerned with the exposure length, the intensity of the light that you're using, all this kind of stuff. But with the Hero 11, you literally just need to press record and then just do whatever you want to do. If you want to write out some letters, take your time writing them out. It's tough to write backwards sometimes. If you want to do some cool artwork around an object or try to, you know, turn a tree in your yard into a, a Christmas tree, take your time and the camera will adjust everything for you. I like using the little Aperture MCs. They're my favorite lights for light painting because they're small, but they're bright and you can change them to any color, but you don't need to use a dedicated, you know, $100 light like that. You can use pretty much anything. The other favorite thing that I have is just the light on my phone. As you can see in this one here, I tried to cover it up when I didn't need it. And then it just sort of did this ET effect where my finger was red, but then it looked like I had a white light and a red light, but the red is just my flesh in this case. But the reason I was trying to cover it up is because the light painting will capture the entire trail of light. And so if you want it to start and stop at a certain point, being able to turn off the light or cover up the light fully helps a lot. In this example, I was just using a rag to do that when I was doing light painting around this camera. And this is kind of what it looks like <laughs> as I'm going around doing light painting. It's not super exciting, but it's also not super stressful. It's like really easy and really fun. And the GoPro will automatically turn your light painting exposure into a video. And if you want to use that, you can just freeze the last frame. And then you can do something like this where I keyframe some movement into the camera. So when the last frame freezes the image is still moving a little bit and it doesn't look like a video just froze and because you are recording at a high resolution even though these aren't still images which you do have the option in a lot of time-lapse modes to just use still photos and then stitch them together I've just been using the video modes for everything but even though this isn't made of photos it is made of high resolution video so that means that you can take a frame and either from the GoPro app or from your editing software you can just export that frame as a still image and then you have a really cool looking still image of light painting that you can share And it's also dawned on me before we go any further that perhaps we should take a break from time lapses to thank Artlist for sponsoring today's video. Because if you're using your awesome camera to make an awesome video, you might need some awesome music for that video. And as I've said many, many times, Artlist is literally just the best license out there for creators. I've used Artlist literally since day one of starting my YouTube channel, and it has gotten me through so many projects over the years. Artlist royalty-free music library is always expanding, and their licensing really truly is second to none. Any projects you create and publish while you have an active Artlist subscription will be covered forever. And and no matter what your goal is, you've got a few different plans to choose from. The social creator plan will let you use Artlist Music across all of your personal accounts and platforms. But if you do want to take things one step further, the Creator Pro plan, which is the one that I have, lets you use Artlist Music on all platforms for both personal and commercial projects. So you're pretty much covered no matter what. And if you are part of a creative team, there's now a Teams plan that lets you provide Artlist Music to a team of up to seven people. And beyond that, there's even an enterprise plan if you're an enterprising individual or team. So be sure to use the link in the description to get two additional months on your Artlist subscription. Thank you again to Artlist for sponsoring this video and for supporting me and my channel so much over the years. And now let's jump back in. It's time to talk more about time lapses. Let's keep things rolling. Let's keep this video driving forward by now talking about the vehicle lights mode. Just like the other two modes, it's important to keep the camera stationary when you're doing vehicle lights. And then this will let you do that thing that you might've seen many times where it's like cars are moving and the headlights and the taillights of the cars are sort of, you know, light streaks. It's almost like light painting. It's a type of light painting. And just like with star trails, you have the option to choose if you want short, long, or maximum light trails for your cars. That setting is probably going to depend on basically how much traffic traffic there is and the effect that you're going towards. And now we can jump to the other three time-lapse modes, which are also available on the Hero 10 and some of the previous models as well. So let's start with the traditional time-lapse mode. This is just, you're taking a bunch of like still freeze frames and just pushing them together to make a video. You can take traditional time lapses a little bit further by doing things like I mentioned a minute ago and adding in keyframe, you know, zoom ins and zoom outs or even pans and stuff over the frame if you wanna add in some motion. You can also do a really cool thing, which is super simple. I don't think you can do this in the GoPro app, but you could do it in other editing software. If you duplicate your time-lapse clip, 
set the top one's opacity to 50% and just nudge it forward or backwards one frame, you're gonna get kind of this blur effect, which can sometimes be really helpful to sort of emphasize the movement and the chaos instead of everything being a crisp, still image. Just a fun thing to try sometimes, doesn't work all the time, but it's fun sometimes. The next time-lapse mode that's been around for a while is really one of my favorites, and that's time warp, because what really differentiates this from other modes is that the camera can move. So if you're wondering what the difference is between the time lapse mode and the time warp mode, time warp, you can move the camera around. I have a lot of fun using it on bike rides. If I wanna capture a bike ride and you know, the camera is on a bike moving, it's almost like you had a drone going at like a really high speed. It's just, it's so cool. It's like the camera is flying. There's a lot of really fun stuff you can do since you can move the camera during a time lapse. It's a very different thing than normal. And the last time lapse mode, which has been around again for a while is night lapse. If you've ever tried to use this on a regular camera like a mirrorless camera or a DSLR setting up your night exposures can be really really tough this is great because the GoPro just takes care of it it's the same as a traditional time lapse except its settings are ideal for low light for nighttime for night lapses time lapses at night shocking I know personally I like to stick with auto intervals and then 30 second exposures especially if you're doing stars and stuff like that you definitely don't want to move the camera or have the camera on like a wobbly tripod during night lapse because those 30 second exposures any kind of movement is going to look strange this example I actually had the camera clipped to the top of this gazebo here which was moving a little bit in the wind I kind of like the effect in this case but it's not as solid and crisp as it would be if it were mounted on a more sturdy tripod or a more stable surface so those are all the time-lapse modes, but there are a few other things that I think are worth mentioning. The first being scheduled capture, which is pretty awesome, especially if you want to do a time-lapse or a night-lapse of certain stars or planets. You want to catch the sunrise, but you don't want to wake up in the middle of the night or super early to set up your camera. You can actually just set up the camera wherever you want it to be and then schedule the capture. And at that time, the camera will turn on and start recording without you having to do anything which is pretty awesome. You can even also adjust the duration. So if you only want it to record for you know an hour, you can set that and then you're not gonna end up with a four hour time lapse. And the last feature I wanna talk about is pretty cool and it's like sort of related to time lapses, but I didn't really know where it fit. It's called hindsight. Maybe it's not really time lapse related, but it's pretty cool. In hindsight, it's pretty cool. Basically what this means is it's a setting you can enable within the camera and you can set it to either 15 or 30 seconds. And what it will do is when you press record, it will actually capture the 15 or 30 seconds before you started pressing record. So it kind of means the camera sort of always like capturing and keeping this imagery in like cash on hand not cash like money, but like memory cash. <laughs> and then if you press record, then it saves it to the memory card. It's not something you want to have on all the time because the camera recording, even when it's not recording, is obviously going to use more battery power. However, it can be really cool if you wanted to do something like catch lightning or fireworks or some specific moment and you don't want to just have the camera recording indefinitely until this thing does or doesn't happen you can just have the camera set up when the thing happens hit record and then it will go back and you will have captured that moment as long as it was within the 15 or 30 seconds whatever you have it set to so that's a lot of capability and those are a lot of features in a tiny little camera like this the time lapse modes have always been some of my favorite gopro features and with the hero 11 it just takes them one further to 11 and because it is so simple it also opens these things up and makes them so much more accessible to so many more people who might not have had access to a regular camera or even wanted to deal with it but now they can experiment with all this cool stuff because it's so simple and easy just built right into the tiny little camera and speaking of things that are fun thank you to everyone who helped support my channel through patreon and youtube channel memberships and if you want to know a bit more about the gopro hero 11 check out my full review right here or this other super fun video right here before more time elapses.